Well, good afternoon, boys and girls. Can y'all hear that? Usually there's all kind of noise on the other side of this wall in this 40,000 square foot building that the studio resides in. And there's a hustle and bustle of people placing or uh, putting their orders and then shipping them out to you. But today, I'm the only one in this building. The only one. Why is that, you ask? Or maybe you're not asking. Well, today, today has been a project two years in the making. The two main distribution centers that we have here in Albany, Georgia, now sit idle because basically across the street from uh, this building is a 240,000 square foot building that we have been renovating and installing the latest and the greatest state of the art distribution equipment that you can even imagine. And today is when all the staff reported for duty for training and off we go <laughs> and i just left there a little while ago and it is nothing short of extraordinary it, it is it is something else i mean they did a fantastic job with this with this building and our, our other one about a block away but it pales in comparison to um what they have what they have built over there but i do want to warn you they are going through a little bit of a learning curve. Lots of training, lots of new equipment, and with that takes a little time to get up to speed. So if your order is a little bit taking a little bit longer than usual, that would be why. But I can guarantee you this, it is going to be worth it. Um, that building is going to, we could basically quadruple what we do now in half the time, but with the same amount of people. So nobody got let go. If anything, I think we hired more. And it is a beehive of activity at this point in time. And I can't wait to see it hitting on all cylinders, but even running as it is, it's still unbelievably impressive. And I'll be glad when I can maybe share some videos online with uh, what we've built over there because it is truly something special. But today we're just gonna, <laughs> badly as I wanna go back over there. Today we're gonna spend a little time and answer a few questions. And there's a few, that I think I missed last week. All right, let's swing around. And for once, I don't have a, an announcement as far as a, a new giveaway. I know that the multimedia team has something else in the works, but oh, that's not true. We're, we are giving away that Honda Grom, so you need to go enter to win that. But our PMR, PRMX uh, giveaway is finished, and we do have that uh, grand prize winner. Congratulations. That was a really fun contest. We gave away a really a lot of really cool stuff, especially if you're into motocross or supercross. A lot of those items uh, are sought after, no doubt. But let's get straight to some uh, questions that I may have missed. Dustin Bowen had asked me, "I'm having a problem when I fill up the fill up the reserve up and pump the brake lever. Nothing will come out of the bleeder valve." When I open it up, could it possibly be a clogged hose? Yes, it could be. But I've run, on, I've run into this on a couple of different machines, and I don't recall the, uh, the maker model. But it would not want to drop down and start bleeding unless I reinstalled the cap and the, uh, the diaphragm up top. Does that really, that kind of defies logic, but uh, that, that was the case. And I, I can't recall which machine it was that I, I had that issue on. It, it may have been, um, it may have been the, uh, that 850 Polaris Sportsman that I was doing some work on. Seems like it, it had to have that cover reinstalled on the brake master before it would actually start pressurizing and pushing the fluid down. So you may want to try that on your unit and see if that's the case. All right, Oprah X Ghost. Um, my carburetor on my dirt bike is brand new. The first time using it, it only runs on choke. Any ideas? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, let's go back in time to Christmas 1974. There's a 1973 Honda XL70 under the tree. It gets loaded up. We go out to a friend's house to ride. Yours truly is eight years old, and I've dated myself. Had gas, ready to go. Kick, 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 kick. That thing would not start. Everybody else is out having fun riding their machines, except for me. So thus started my journey of becoming a mechanic. Check the, the air box. That was fine. Check the spark. We had spark. The carburetor. 
probably not getting fuel. And I noticed this little brass flat blade screwdriver at the bottom of this bowl, of this magical device that makes my engine supposedly run. I open it up and this ooze kind of drains out of it. And believe it or not, that is the way they were all shipped. And they still may do it on the carburetor models. Honda puts some type of, I don't want to call it sludge, but it's the shipping type fluid to where things, well, pretty much mothballs it. But to get the machine to run, you have to, of course, open up your petcock valve, open up that valve, and then drain that out of the float bowl. Close up the float bowl, voila. All was well in the world. So I did get enjoy my Christmas present after all. But that was the problem. And that may be the case on your machine if it's brand new. And shame on the service department for not doing a, uh, a check on it before they let it roll out the door. We'll see if that's the case on yours. John LaCour. LaCour. Hmm. Hi, I have a 2008 500 HO Sportsman. Two brake lines on the back caliper. Yeah. When I do when I do front, I then do the back ones that leads to the front one first, or the one that has its own filler cap. Okay, um, on the Polaris, your your front brake line is actually connected to your rear brake line as well. Now, you, when you just go to hit your front brake handle, that just goes directly to the caliper. Now, when you push your brake pedal, that activates both your rear brake and just a little bit of the front brake. So you're actually gonna need to bleed it twice. And I usually bleed the, the furthest part first. So if you've already done the uh, your brake handle first, then I drop down to that reservoir that you're talking about, which is for the rear, quote, quote, the rear brake master. And you wanna go ahead and bleed it to the front caliper first or the front calipers first, and then finish off with the rear. Did you get all that? Seems like we did that on that uh, Polaris 850 Sportsman. So you may want to look at that playlist and see if it's there. Let's see if we are getting people. Uh, there's a couple of folks. We'll um, answer a few more questions over on the ones I missed last week. And then we'll swing back over. Timmy Foster had, had asked me, Hi, John. Mr. John, <clears throat> I have a 2006 Honda Rancher TRX two-wheel drive and I'm rebuilding the top end. While putting the rings and the piston in the sleeve, I ruined the sleeve the sleeve, sleeve gasket? Can I use a tube of gasket maker that withstands up the heat to 2000 degrees? Okay, are you talking about the gasket on the base of your cylinder? Maybe, but those are not that expensive. Uh, you might be able to use uh, a... Um, what is it? 1211 from um, Threadlocker, not Threadlocker. I've forgotten. Um, it's 1211 sealant. It's a silicone, a silicone based high temperature sealant. But I really would recommend that if you're going to order it, uh, order something, just go ahead and order the right stuff and uh, replace the gasket itself. Now, if you've damaged the head gasket, no way, no how. You just need to go ahead and replace it. The base gasket in a pinch, you could probably get away with it because that's not a compressed gas a high compression gasket, because that's just at the base of the, uh, the cylinder itself. 2000 degree, I hope it doesn't get that hot. <laughs> if it does, we got other problems, don't we? Nathan Jones had asked me, I've got a problem with my VTX 1300, by machine, I owned one. My piston won't compress enough to fit the new brake pads. What could be holding them back? Yeah. Um, Usually, well, when you go to change out pads, you, you run into this. It gets where it's about that far from going all the way back in, and it just needs a little bit more ump to get in there. And what I typically use is a, a C-clamp. And just, you may want to use a piece of wood so you don't scratch the, uh, the surface of the, uh, the caliper itself. But yeah, you push them back in as far as you can with your fingers, and then that last little eighth of an inch, you have to use a C-clamp to do it. Hey, I caught you, caught up for um, last week. Almost did it. Okay, we've got some questions now. Josh is asking me, "Hey, John, thanks for the content. If I can't figure out something in my shop, I usually have you usually have a video to do it. That is what we are here to do. Well, I say we. It's just me right now, but 
occasionally somebody comes in here and operates the cameras, which I'm extremely grateful for. And she will be here next week. Mad Patter, hey, I have a 2007 Honda 400EX. I'm doing the A-arm brushings and I'm having trouble getting them out. I have used bearing pullers and nothing has worked. Do you have any tips? All right, are you talking about the uh, the uh, the A-arm bearing, just the uh, the sleeves up top? Those shouldn't be that tough to knock out and because those are more or less just collars. If, uh, if memory serves. Now, if you're talking about the control arms, those can be a, a, a booger, you know, those pivot points. Now, Honda makes a great unit. I was actually using it um, today on the, uh, the YXZ. Some of those didn't want to push out, but if you, if you have to go to that extreme to get them to press, get them to pop out, you may want to consider it. Um, I'll tell you what, we will, or I will send the, uh, the part number for that particular unit to Hank and Hank can uh, drop it to you in the chat, or not the chat, but do a direct message to you. So Hank, if you would make a uh, make a note of uh, Mad Pattern, let's see if we can get him this part number. I guess I could take my mic off and walk over there and get it, but you know, we need to probably keep going. David is asking me, thanks for all the videos and information and your team have put out. Do you know if I can convert a uh, Yamaha Grizzly 660 to EFI? I've often thought about that, not on that particular model, because EFI is just so easy to deal with. But there's so many things that you have to take into consideration and different sensors that, you know, that the carburetor ignore, ignores, such as uh, your timing, your intake air temperature, or your intake air pressure. All of these different things that your ECU has to think about and calculate to determine what the correct you know, air fuel ratio should be sent through uh, the fuel injection system and the, the, the throttle control. Now, is there somebody out there that makes that maybe, but uh, good gosh, um, your return on, return on investment would be, I don't think it'd be worth it. Um, best I can uh, suggest, just make sure you keep that carb clean the, and uh, adjust it correctly for whatever altitude you're at and, uh, and just live with it. I, I don't think it would be worth doing it personally, but I understand where you're coming from. Pharmacist Beats. Hey, John, how is your shoulder doing? Take it easy for a week or two after a cortisone shot. God bless. Well, I elected not to do the cortisone shot. I was there on Monday and we went on a, uh, oh, what did we use? It was um, prednisone. So only thing is with that, it makes me really jumpy. So <laughs> y'all say a prayer for my girlfriend. Cause she's the one who has to put up with me if it makes me too cranky. But that seems to be working fantastically. I mean, I might even work on one of my cars this weekend. We'll see. But thanks for asking. Um, Josh has asked me, uh, I do have a 2019 XP 1000 notice some noise on my last ride. And after inspection, I noticed the drive shaft goes into the transmission, nearly slips off. Oof. Other machines had a lot less movement ideas. All right. Are you talking about just one of the half shafts or the actual drive shafts that's going from your, your transfer case up to your front dif differential? I have seen on several Polaris units, I mean, you go and look at the, uh, the front diffs. I mean, you could all just about wobble the, uh, the CV joints that are actually going in. And that's usually an indicator of the, it, the fluid is either leaked out and it's prematurely wearing, wearing the splines. So I'd be curious, even though it's a 2019, if you've uh, checked your fluid lately and if you haven't, it's probably time to go ahead and change it. Um, the other thing on those particular shafts, there are o not O-rings, but C-clips that are on the end of the splines. And that's more or less what locks it in when it goes in. You may want to pull those out to make sure one of those is not worn out or damaged. So that'd be the two things uh, I would take a look at. Sheer Energy, Hip Guru. I've never been called hip before, but thank you. Maybe a guru, maybe just a goo. I'm just a goop. <laughs> Greg Mercer, I have a Honda 420 Rancher. Can you upgrade it to 26 inch tire rim without lifting the unit? If yes, can you recommend options? I would like to get the front end to ranch 
match the rear as well. 26, that's a, that's a pretty big wheel to be putting on there. And if I personally made that upgrade, no, but it's going to be real close to your mud flaps, especially when you're turning on the inside. It, it's probably going to rub, uh, rub the inside of the frame, whether it's left or right. Um, if you're going to go through and do that, you may have to put just a, a mild lift on it. But keep in mind, if you do that, it's going to change your ge geometry on all your driveline components, especially the front. And unless you've got an independent rear suspension, but it's going to change that as well. At any rate, um, it's going to put a little bit more stress because your angle, instead of being like this, is going to be like that. And that's going to prematurely wear your CV joints. So I really think about that long and hard before I did it. I'm trying to send me a message. Okay. My production team has said, I really think we should do a ruckus custom build. What do y'all think? You want to see me build out a ruckus, turn it into something Honda never intended? I think it'll be fun. What are your thoughts? All right. Sheer energy, sound picture in good quality. However, a better backdrop would look more inviting. What are you talking about? This is my world. This is my personal world man cave. I love it. Hey, but to each their own. I guess I could do one of those digital in, you know, enhancements. And if Tracy had anything to do with it, it looked like Star Trek Enterprise or the Millennium Falcon or something crazy like that. Or I don't know, the, the Death Star. Get the feeling she may be a Star Wars geek. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. We'll think about it. Rides like Nacho. Oh boy. Breaking Bad person, maybe? Or that'd be a more better call Saul. Should a low tension replacement coal for a stator have resistance or does it have to be installed and grounded? Bought a new LT coal and it doesn't show any resistance out of the box. No, it should have resistance on it. If I remember correctly, that's that's a two wire. Oh, let me think about this for a minute. Or does it have to be grounded? I think it has to be grounded because it's it's looking for just a trigger. So it's an inductive. It's looking for an inductive an inductive signal, and that has to be referenced. So take each one of your wires and go to the uh, the mounting plate of it if we're talking about that pickup coil and I think that's what you're referring to and see if there's a resistance but if it's brand new I mean it, it should go ahead and work straight out of the box I, those usually don't fail uh, hopefully it was an OEM part all right Josh came back it's the half shaft that goes into the rear transmission okay the output of the trans is fine not the axle itself. Okay, then it, this is what I was talking about. Um, go ahead and see if that clip, if you can remove the axle, is in place. And then check your splines, check your fluid, make sure that uh, it hasn't leaked out and you're getting some premature wear on the end of the slines and it's causing some slop maybe this way and this way as well. Tony is asking me, good afternoon, John. I'm looking for an upgrade to the 2019 Player Sportsman 570 shocks. Um, EPI, 120 pound springs are so aggressive. There's there's any compression left on the OE shock. Any recommendation? If anybody's going to have an aftermarket for that, it's probably going to be Works Performance WP. They probably have something for it. If I look for that particular make and model, no. But uh, if anybody's going to have it, it's going to be them or long shot, you may want to look and see if IBOC has any type of um, um, springs that or springs that would work on yours that would maybe uh, change it from a single rate to a dual rate. And maybe that would accomplish what you're wanting to do because evidently you're having some bottoming action, but you don't want to make it so harsh to where it's just beating you to death. And that's what a, a, a dual spring can uh, set up with help with. It's got that small spring that's for the small stuff. And then once the small spring is used up, the hard stuff takes over on the, uh, the larger spring. So just a thought. All right, guys, don't tell me I caught up with y'all. I get to head back over to the new DC. Can't wait till the, uh, the team starts posting, the multimedia team starts posting some uh, videos and images because it is 
truly impressive what the uh, upper management of the outdoor network is, is building. It's, it's amazing. Mm. Oh, one more popped up. Ox R7I. No idea. Hi, John. Um, um, uh, do buy a local guy, and I like your videos and all the lives. And I always wanted to ask if you, if I can buy something from your web website, please. I think we're shipping to Dubai, aren't we, guys? That should be a problem. So I think with yes. All right, Tony Polaris, SP. As always, great information. You're the best. Thank you. You're very welcome, Tony. All right, guys. It is three twenty. I've caught up with you. I want to get back over there. <laughs> and uh, continue to watch this uh, this magic unfold. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming by, spending a little time with us, sending in some good questions, as always. Hopefully, I was able to help you out uh, when I can. We just want to say thanks for shopping here with us at Partzilla and our sister company, Boats.net. We also handle the marine side of life, too. And God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3. And who knows? Maybe I'll be able to share some pictures. It would be like a show and tell. So, uh, you know, give you an inside look to, as to what, what we've been up to right across the street. But at any rate, everybody have a great weekend, and we will see you on Friday. Later.